Mary had heard that having an email list for your readers was incredibly important when it comes to selling your books and getting them to go. The problem was people kept unsubscribing from her list and marking it as spam. So perhaps the email list for her readers was a bad idea, or maybe she was just using the wrong strategy. That's one of the reasons why in today's video, we're going to discuss three Amazon KDP strategies that don't work in 2022. Try this instead. This is Chris Baird from selfpublishingmadeeasynow.com where self-publishing doesn't have to be so hard. So the thing is, is that Mary, who's a, currently a college student who lives in Omaha, Nebraska, she's writing in multiple niches and mostly just ones that she's interested in or has the ability to write in. She's always had an enthousi been enthusiastic about writing, and so she's writing in romance, she's writing in fashion, and then also a category of tiny houses. The idea we don't have to live in these gigantic houses, but we can live in small container-sized houses instead. And so the thing was, she had a dream in her mind of maybe if she could get these books to sell and moving along while she's sleeping, she'd be making money from it and this passive income would then support other her different hobbies that she has. And this might also be a possible professional or a career move for her to stay in this particular area here where she's just continuing to focus on things that she's already interested in since she is a writing, uh, I think her major was in, uh, it was in writing or something, literature maybe it was, but whatever the case was, she, she was so good at writing that it wouldn't didn't create a problem writing in these different niches. But she discovered that she was trying this email strategy in order to get subscribers on her list, but then they would unsubscribe about as fast as they were subscribing to her list. But that resulted in her having an awful lot of frustration and not being able to keep a list of loyal subscribers on her email list. And what that meant was she wouldn't be able to leverage this list in terms of getting reviews and getting people to buy her latest books. And she started wondering if maybe the people who liked to read her kinds of books just really weren't interested in being on the email list or being in contact and being asked to help with whether it's editing or, or, or getting advanced copies in order to leave a review or any of these other strategies that she had heard work for many other authors. So she tried a couple of things. She asked them why they were unsubscribing and they said, well, your emails just aren't that relevant enough. They're not hitting things that we're particularly interested in. She also tried uh, and that didn't really help too much because she was like, well, they're, they're about what the different books are in. She also asked them if they could leave reviews, but they weren't really all that interested in, in doing that because they said this, these type of books, well, this book that you're doing, we don't even care about that. You know, so the person who had subscribed because of the romance book, they, they weren't interested at all in terms of purchasing or leaving a review on her books that were dealing with fashion, for example, or tiny houses. It was completely irrelevant to them. And so she was beginning to get incredibly frustrated and seeing that none of these strategies that she was doing she was sort of doing them correctly, seemed to be working. So here's what happened. The thing is, she ended up reading a number of my blogs and she ended up grabbing a copy of my self-publishing checklist, Secrets. And as a result, by going through that list, she began to see some things that she wasn't doing. So she booked a free discovery session with me so that we could take a deep dive into exactly what she was doing. And what we found was the first thing she was writing books in, and these are the three big things that don't work in 2022. The first one is writing books in multiple genres as opposed to staying in your lane. We need to make sure that the niche that you're targeting is one and not three. In her case, it was three. She even had other niches she was considering doing Doing it and then all of these people were being pulled in to her email list and that's the second one emailing people about offerings related to a book or something that they purchased that they simply never expressed in this other area so if you're putting so in her case she was putting out books remember in the romance niche and then sending emails related romance and these other three niches and the people on the on the romance would subscribe hoping to hear more from her about her romance books but then they were getting these emails regarding tiny houses and it was just like this is this doesn't connect so it's this incongruity it wasn't aligned there was the, the idea the marketing that she was doing was out of alignment with the products and offerings that she was coming to the market with so her books simply were were, were uh, disaligned. She thought the idea was, well, if I write in lots of topics, I'll bring in lots of people from different areas. And what she ended up with was a not very engaged group of subscribers on her email list. And this is a huge issue that many authors face when they're building an email list. And the final thing that you definitely want to avoid in 2022 that she was doing is she was not emailing her list often enough. Her readers need to be hearing from her at least once a week, maybe even twice a week, but at a minimum twice a month or once a 
month, but I really twice a month should be probably the absolute worst, lowest you can go when you're building an email list. Otherwise, they mark you as spam. People forget who you are and if why they subscribe to your list in the first place when you're doing this. So then when it comes time to say, hey, I got a new book out, would you like to leave a review on it for a free copy? The people on your list will tell you, I don't remember who you are and why are you spamming me? And in addition to add insult to injury on this one, if you also happen to be sending these requests on a niche that they never signed up for, like I'm not interested in golf and yet you, I was signed up for puppy training and now you're sending me golf emails, it makes no sense at all for the, for the readers. In fact, you have to ask yourself, would you really want people hitting you with emails on all sorts of subjects? You sign up for a fashion email list where you can get some tips and tricks and then comes tips on computer technology and computer programming. It just doesn't make sense. It's this incongruency that creates a challenge on the email list. And that was one of the things that she was definitely doing. And these were the big three that people are doing. And the key solution, of course, is doing the exact opposite. The most important is that email list is only should be targeting a single niche, that audience and you're contacting them on a regular basis. That really makes the difference. And for her, it was initially just my self-publishing secret checklist that got her thinking through what she was doing. And you also can grab a copy and start thinking it through. If you look in the description, grab a copy. It's absolutely free and it will give you the secrets that you are not currently using that perhaps you ought to be. So back again to her. So in her situation, she decided, okay, fine. She saw that her email provider had actually sent her a warning based upon the number of people marking her as spam, which is a huge no-no because ultimately as a email doing as an author, who's writing books, who's writing to readers, as an, uh, doing email marketing, our goal is to ensure that the emails that we're sending are going to people who actually wish to receive them. If they don't wish to receive them, then we unsubscribe them from the list. And the way we can tell is they unsubscribe themselves, and that's why you should use something like Active Campaign, which is the one I use, where they're, you're following all of the anti-spam rules, and you can find my affiliate link below in the description for Active Campaign. And it's very effective because they can just click unsubscribe. And if they don't open an email in six months, I go in there and clean them up and just take them off the list. So, you know, and some of you all may have actually been in that category where you quit getting emails from me one day. And the answer is it's because you were not opening the emails. If you're not opening or responding or, or whatever to the emails, then that's a way that you communicate that you're not interested. And I like a hot list, a list where it's very engaged readers, people who want to receive these emails and then they're getting them on a regular basis. And that will tell Google also so that, hey, this is a good list. Do not put me in the spam folder. So even if people don't consider it spam, it can be treated as spam just because you're sending it to so many people who are not opening those emails. So we want to make sure it's a really, really hot list. This list is people who are engaged with the topic that you're writing your books about, whether it's romance novels or these others. So she decided, okay, fine. She shut down all of the lists and she saw that her most of her sales were coming through the romance novels. So she decided to double down on the romance niche and that her email list would only target that. She just simply removed the, all this email stuff from the other books and only the romance novel would bring in people onto her romance, uh, onto this email list that she had. And what was the end result? The end result was the subscriptions. Obviously they started to go down a little bit, but the unsubscribes dropped drastically. People quit marking her as spam. She started sending out the emails on a more regular basis and discovered people were opening them at a higher rate. So they recognized who she was. They knew there was gonna be value related to a subject they already said they were interested in. And she also did move over to active campaign as opposed to trying to send these emails out personally, which was a terrible idea in the first place. But by going to active campaign, it made it easy for people to unsubscribe if they weren't interested and also update their contact information as they need to do within active campaign. It's very, very simple. And so this gave her quite a bit of hope. And the thing is, is that she started seeing that when she asked for people to be advanced readers, at part of her advanced review team, she had sent them a copy of her book in exchange for a an honest review of the book that these people are actually willing to do it because everybody on the list was actually related to her romance novels, which is incredibly important. And those were the, these were started with the three things that definitely don't work in 2022. But then the other thing you want to keep around in mind, there's not just these three, but there's actually a whole series. There's seven deadly sins of self-publishing and you can find out more about them right up here. Thanks.